Okay, I need to be quick. I think it's gonna rain soon. So I built my own mechanical keyboard and it was actually my first time soldering. I filmed the whole stuff because I hoped it could help someone when building their own keyboard or even inspire someone to build something for the first time because it was really fun and I think it's really satisfying to build something with your own hands. I'll show the finished keyboard first and then the build. It's quite long so I bookmarked everything. Yeah, enjoy! Once you cross this world and into that unconscious state, you will vividly be present in everything you see. Closer and closer you go. Let's start with a few things that you will need for building the keyboard, which is the soldering iron, keyboard parts, some PCBs, these are the plates and the case, and some keycaps. And when I say keyboard parts, I really mean the cable, some screws, rotary encoder, displays, switch sockets, diodes, knob for the encoder, microcontroller, per key and underglow LEDs, and these are the sockets for the microcontroller. I'm using the switches as well. These are the Gutter North Pole 2.0 linear switches. I'm starting with the diodes here. This tool that I'm using for the bending is just HDMI cable cover, which was the perfect width. And you just put them through the PCB, bend the legs so it stayed there, and then it looks like this and it's ready for the soldering. This was fun part. It was really easy to solder. Uh, I probably used a lot of solder. As you can see, there's pretty a lot that there's a lot of there, but it was my first time. And then you just uh, snip the legs. Yeah, the next part was my least favorite. These are the pair key lights. It was so painful to solder. It was really small. Uh, I started with putting some solder to one of those pads. And then securing the LED to the PCB, reflow the solder and put it in the place and then finish the remaining three legs of the LED. This is how it looks like. It looks good, but yeah, it causes a lot of problems later. Then there are these underglow LEDs. It was the same as the pair key LEDs, but these are bigger and they then don't have legs. So we just, again, put a little bit of solder to one part of the PCB and just secure the LED there. Refloat the solder and push it down. These are the resistors and they go here. This is probably the most beautiful component in my opinion. And it was really easy to solder as well. You just bend the legs, secure it to the PCB and then just solder those. It's in the place and then same 
with as with the diodes you just bend the legs and snip them and then there are cow switches which was really easy to solder just make sure if it's the right position of the switch on the board make sure that the the hole on the pcb board is not obstructed with the cow switch there are two parts that you need to solder to the pcb i used a lot of um, solder because it's th there can be a little bit of stress on the switch when you are pushing the uh, gutter on switches to the board and just make sure that this stays free because you are gonna put the encoder there and these are the reset buttons really easy just push them push them through the board and solder is the same with this trrs uh, jacks i secured them with the with the tape so they are not moving and they stay flush to the board because you are soldering from the other side of the board and there are just six legs pretty easy to solder as well we remove the tape and just check if it stays flush to the board as like this then there are the sockets for the OLED displays nothing major i just secured them with the tape at the other side and just soldered these four legs and it's just like that now it's probably the best time to uh, check if your microcontroller is working and maybe flash the qmk firmware on it these are the sockets for the controller you could probably just solder the controller directly to the board but then if something happens if it's broken you can you it's really painful to desolder it later so i soldered these uh, sockets there and make sure you snip this part off if they are connected because that's where the USB-C uh, port is going and then just push these pins uh, through the holder put the microcontroller on the sockets push the pins through and just snip those uh, holders maybe do it more evenly than me but yeah it's fine just leave there a few millimeters uh, for the solder and just solder the legs on the microcontroller and then you can easily remove it like this if something happens your microcontroller have legs now Uh, now it's time for the rotary encoders they are not uh, hot swappable so we are gonna solder it to the board directly and it's just easy i think it's five pins there just solder them to the board It's time for the plate and for the switches. It's good practice to just put one switch to the each corner of your plate and then just put it on the board and to the cow switches and secure the plate on the board and then finish all the switches one by one when it's when the plate is mounted on the plate but th that was not the case with my switches this gutter and north pole 2.0 linear switches were really stubborn and it was so hard to push them through the plate so i did it outside the plate was not mounted on the board 
I did outside and then just put all the switches to the uh, board and the car switches at once. Now I'm just snipping the legs of the OLED displays. They are too long. You need to snip like two, three millimeters and then just push them to the sockets and it just should stay like this. Now it was the time to connect the keyboard for the first time. I connected the two halves of the keyboard with TRRS cable and then I connected the USB-C cable and all the switches were supposed to light up red. But that's not really what happened. Only few of them light up, one was green and some of the switches didn't even work. So I pulled them off the keyboard and I found out that I bent the leg, but it's, it's not broken. I just straightened the leg and it was working again. I was testing it with the keyboard tester here. And then after like two hours of debugging, I found out why my LEDs are not working. First of all, they are connected in the chain. So if the previous LED is not really working, all the subsequent LEDs are not gonna glow up. I found out that I shortened few legs I put there much more solder than I should have and the legs were just touching each other. So I desoldered them and now it was all working. So after this, I just clean up my table and it was time for final touches. Here I'm just attaching this clear OLED covers to the board. So just I just put the screws and spacers in place. Just make sure you are not over tightening these screws again because you can easily break the OLED cover. We are gonna continue with securing the case to the keyboard, but just make sure your spacers are long enough. If it's, if it's flush with the PCB, that's not gonna work. It needs to be like this, at least like three, four millimeters above the PCB board. Then this was really satisfying part just peeling off the uh, protectors from the case I choose the acrylic frosted plate and again make sure that these are just tight enough do not over tighten this you can easily break the cover it's the acrylic after all it's really brittle. And then maybe clean a little bit and just put the bump on stickers there. I put one on each corner, six total. One of the last thing that I needed to do is just securing the these black shiny knobs on the rotary encoders. And there are buttons as well, so you can press them, which is pretty cool. And also I bought the, this, this key set because I haven't got any spare keys left. You don't need to buy a new one for each keyboard but I do, I probably shouldn't, it's a lot of money. And yeah, that's the finished keyboard. Okay, and just like that, it's done. Uh, maybe not just like that. It was 15 minutes long video and in reality it took me like 8 hours to build the keyboard and then another 2 to troubleshoot why the lights are not working. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it was challenging but definitely fun and I would do it again if it wasn't this expensive. Uh, yeah, if you have any tips and tricks just let me know down in the comments and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!